Hi everybody, today we're talking on Utah English Advanced Unit 2 Communities. We're going to discuss introductory it sentences beginning with it and we're going to describe a place. Look at the photos. The first photo is Kali, the second photo is Corsica, and the third photo is Cape Town. What do you know about the places in the photos? What do you think they're like? Would you like to visit them? Why and why not? Please answer these questions. We're going to read the text, but before reading the text, let's focus on new words. If you don't know them, please look up for them in the dictionary. Nurture, bustling, Las Calinas, Mulatto, Rundown, Stunning, Gaze, Salsa Teca. The text is called Kelly. In Kelly, they say even the ghosts dance salsa. It's written both in Cuba, nurtured in New York, and carried on the wings all the way to Hot Kelly can be heard in bars, on buses, along the avenues of John Chido and Plaza Caicedo. And here too, in a taxi moving at the speed of light, taking me to the heart of the bustling city, the driver slows down at a traffic light, turns to me and says, Las Calinas, the women from Cali, are the most beautiful women in the world. And we are off again driving past cans of mulatto men, laughing in the street. It's no wonder the city is adored by everyone who visits. My hotel is a rundown old building whose blue skin is peeling in the heat. It has a stunning view from the balcony and I gaze down on the square. The guidebooks tell you to visit the Gold Museum and the Museum of Colonial Art with churches of San Antonio and La Merced. But there is only one thing on my mind as I leave the key at reception. Salsa. The salsa takers don't get busy until midnight, so instead I stop at the restaurant serving typical Colombian food. Sancocho. A stew made with chunks of beef, vegetables, cassava, a tropical plant with edible roots and plantain, a type of banana, but not so sweet, served with rice. Then I must choose from the amazingly diverse selection of Colombian food. I settle for guanabana and maracuya, and I'm not disappointed. I stroll for a while, tempted by dark smoky cafes, the fans spinning weakly on the ceilings. This is the old unspoiled Cali, which lives side by side with a newer version the Kelly of junk food, internet cafes and last tourist to discos. I walk past the trees and sculptures that line the river and into San Antonio Park and tranquil sport off the beaten track. Later on Avenida Sexta, 6th Avenue, I find what I'm really looking for a Salscoteca. Some charming young Colombians teach me a few dance steps and we chat about Kelly. They say that when times are tough, they dance away their worries. And I must never forget Las Calenas are the most beautiful women in my world. By 2 a.m. the salsa is swinging, the drinks are flowing, the place is packed, and I know one thing for sure. I found the Kelly that I was looking for, the salsa dances paradise. Each place is described as a type of paradise. Which aspects sound good to you? Please tell us. What makes them unique? And which place would you prefer to go to and why? Do you think tourism is good for these three places? Please send your answers to me in the written form. What problems might it bring? Vocabulary. We use some adjectives to describe places like energetic and noisy, full of life, in poor condition, uncared for, amazingly beautiful, 
having variety, not damaged in character or atmosphere, next to each other, extremely large, peaceful, in areas people normally don't go to, very busy, crowded. Please insert these adjectives to the suitable context. And send your answers to me. Think of the places you have been to that match the topics below. It has stunning views. It is off the beaten track. It is unspoiled despite tourism. It is tranquil. It is bustling at the weekends. It has some rundown parts. It has modern parts side by side with the old parts. Please tell us about the places you have been to. If you have never been to any place, please match the topics below with the photos. Please tell us about these pictures, describe them. Read the paragraph below. It is about, is it about Corsica, Cape Town or Kelly? With its wonderful semi-tropical climate and great nightlife, it appears that the city has everything going for it. Local bartender Juan Cardinandes tells me it's no coincidence that the city is growing. We have worked hard to improve everything, the infrastructure, the standard of living, the nightlife. When I think back to 20 years ago, it's surprising how fast things are changing here. We love it when tourists came to stay, it cannot be denied that the city is on the way up and it's a pity I only have a few days here, but I'll be back. We often use introductory eat when we describe our feelings and opinions. It sounds less direct than using I think and I believe. For example, I thought there would be more tourists. It's surprising that there aren't more tourists. I'm sorry to say there aren't many tourists. I have the impression that there aren't many tourists. There is no doubt in my opinion that there aren't many tourists. We also use eat in the middle of a sentence after certain verbs to introduce a clause. I could hardly believe it when I saw how much the city had changed. I would appreciate it if you could send me information about the city. I hate it when I go to see a tourist attraction and it is closed. Match the sentence beginnings to the sentence endings. It's no coincidence that there it's a shame that it shocked me too. It cannot be denied that it's no use. It's no wonder people, it seems strange. It's essential that. And here are the ends of the sentence. So please stop the video and uh, send your answers in written form. Thank you very much for attention. See ya. Bye.